A very good evening to you all and uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this midweek devotion from Northside Community Church in Arari. It's Wednesday the 21st of September. You know, last Sunday we were getting into the book of James in a preaching series which is, we have called Faith to Live By. And James is a very practical book with guidance about how we should live as Christians. Uh, and it was written to Christians who were being scattered and they were living in a time of persecution. But it applies equally to us today as we live in times when Christian values and lifestyle are being eroded alarmingly. And we just see that uh, everywhere and all around us. So tonight we're going to be looking at verses 2 to 18 of chapter 1. And, but I want to start at the end with just some thoughts on the first half of the last verse, uh, that's verse 18. And I'm just going to read that now. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth. You know, and for me... It was important, and it is important, to be able to know what is the basis and the foundation of my faith, my Christian faith. You know, we are not born Christians. We have to make a decision, and that decision has to be based on something. In his word of truth that we referred back to in, in that verse, the Bible and God tell us everything we need to know about Him and also who we can be in Him. And you know, this isn't something that we can work out for ourselves. We need to be taught it or we need to learn it from the Bible. And so that is why we teach it yeah, at Northside to our children and we see that uh, in what uh, Rebecca and Sarah uh, have been doing in the Sunday services for the last two weeks you know just giving us an overview and an understanding of the structure of the Bible and we also preach that every Sunday uh, from the pulpit in our services so when we make a decision to follow Christ, and this is the being born again, it's a spiritual rather than the physical birth. And that's what Jesus talked to Nicodemus about uh, in John 3. So when I said that uh, James is a very practical book, it helps us with the next part of our journey and that is sometimes called the sanctification. And so these verses break down into sections, and I'm not dealing with them in detail, but rather drawing something from each one of those sections if I can. So going back to verses 2 to 4, James tells us that our faith will be tested by trials. But that testing is necessary for maturity and for making our faith um, complete. And he makes it very clear that testing is a purifying and strengthening process for our faith. And so rather than um, complaining or being alarmed by trials, we need to see the reason for them. And because we understand the reason, we can in fact be joyful for them. And then in verses 5 to 8, they deal with something that we need on our Christian journey. And that is wisdom. And so now the wisdom that James is referring to, it's not 
intellectual knowledge, nor philosophical speculation. Rather, it is the wisdom for life, and that wisdom which allows us to live righteously in our relationships and our actions, and the wisdom that helps determine our attitude to and the way that we handle the trials which he was talking about in that first uh, uh, verses. And so we get that wisdom, or we can get that wisdom from reading God's word. But James tells us that we can also ask God for wisdom. And when he does that, James then reminds us of two things about asking. You know, and we do need to be reminded often. So the first thing is that the giver, God, gives generously because that is his nature. And then, as the ones asking, we must ask without doubts. We must be sure both of the power and the desire of God to give. So every one of us will need wisdom. And we should ask, believing that we shall receive that which God knows is right for us to have. And so in the context of uh, testing, uh, and this is verses 9 to 12 now, uh, these uh, verses have a message for everyone, whatever their station in life. The humble, and in this case it's meaning the poor, and the rich. You know, the humble man has a value and therefore self-respect in the church. He is part of the body and he has a purpose. And the rich are warned that there is no security nor eternal value in riches, which they can actually just be wiped out in an instant. And so this then levels the status between the rich and the poor man. And the promise that follows is identical for both of them. You know, if they meet the trials and the testing in the right way. And so just to read from verse 12, which says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood that te the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know, the crown of life is a very rich thing. It could, can mean a lot, but it can be summed up as a full and worthwhile, joyful life. You know, some call that the abundant life. And we have that year, despite the circumstances we may face. So now, in the NIV, the heading to these verses we've been talking about up until now uh, is trials and temptations. My apologies. It's trial. Uh, all the verses are trials and te temptations. It's the next three, ver three, uh, three verses, 13 to 15, which deal specifically with temptations. You know, and James is very clear that temptations are not from God. So we learn in the first three chapters of Genesis of the fallen nature of man. The consequences of our fallen nature is that there is an ongoing tug of war between what we were, you know, our old selves, dead in our sin, slaves to Satan, and what we are now, we have been justified and are children of God. You know, man has a long history, all the way from Adam and Eve, <coughs> of shifting blame and not taking responsibility. 
But Sir James now explains the sequence and the downward spiral that can happen very simply. So the beginning is our own evil desire which lures and entices. And then if that is not checked, this then leads to sinful action and death. And so it's actually a very powerful description, so it's worth reading it, and that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to read verses 14 and 15. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. And so the verses we are looking at conclude on a very positive note. You know, we are told that every good and perfect gift comes from above. They come from our Father in heaven, <coughs> who is the Creator, and he does not change. And so we need to know and to acknowledge that. And just to emphasize, it is every good and perfect gift that comes from above. And so then the final verse, which is where I began, has another layer of meaning. You know, we thought about birth through the word of truth in the Bible, and we've talked a bit about sanctification. But we also know from the Gospel of John that Jesus is the Word. And we are saved by Him because of His death on the cross, which pays the price <coughs> of our sin. So we are justified by Him if we believe in Him. And then this leads us back to that all-important question for each one of us individually. And this is what Gary asked uh, two weeks ago uh, in uh, one of his sermons. And it was the question that Jesus put to his disciples in Matthew 16, verse 15. Who do you think I am? You know, and everything hinges on your answer to that question. So we need to take time just to think about that and to answer it. And so I'm just going to close by, by praying. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word and the Holy Spirit who reveals who you are to us. Just thank you for this book of James and the simple treat teaching that we receive from it. And Father, I ask that we would indeed have the wisdom to see and appreciate every good gift that you give us so generously and especially give thanks for our family at Northside. That we will stay away from the temptations of the world and not be enticed and lured by them. That we would be refined by the trials and through them draw closer to you. Amen. Good night everybody. Thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again on Sunday at Northside at 9am. And if it's possible, please join us um, in the service. Thank you. Good night.